Hi, this is Nick Forster. This week in E-Town, we're going to revisit one of our favorite shows, and it starts right now. Live from E-Town Hall in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains, it's part two of this special E-Town program with this week's guest, from Okima, Oklahoma, John Fulbright, and from Northern California, the legendary Bob Weir. I'm Helen Forster. Join me now in welcoming our host, if you would, Nick Forster. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Helen. Welcome to E-Town Hall. We're so glad you all could be with us. So there's a lot of hope in making original music. Hope that you can capture something. Hope that an audience will connect with what you created. Hope that your songs will stand the test of time. We have got uh, two guests this week who are approaching this classic creative puzzle from different angles. One, John Fulbright, who's amazing and talented and also pretty early on in his career, but he's a great singer, great songwriter and performer. And then we've got one who has been in a band for more than 50 years that's in some ways helped redefine American roots and popular music. But he's still looking for that elusive combination, looking to make music that connects in real time. Uh, so this should be fun. Up uh, first, John Fulbright is from a uh, small town, Oklahoma. He went to Okima High School. He got to start playing at the Woody Guthrie Festival. He quickly went on to write and perform and record his original songs that connected so immediately uh, with critics and fans. He was getting compared to legendary artists like Towns Van Zant and Neil Young. I happen to think that he's in a category all his own because his writing, his singing, and playing, his, his energy, that all comes from who he is and, and where he comes from. Anyway, he's put out two solo records. A third is on the way. He's toured all over the place. He's gotten rave reviews from the LA Times and NPR and the Wall Street Journal, and he's still in his 20s. Uh, I have to say that in many years of doing this show, he's really one of my favorite artists. I'm really glad he could be uh, a part of this special show this week. Please welcome back to E-Town, if you would, John Fulbright. She knows a thing or two about me She didn't learn in passing She knows I'm scared of the dark She knows I'll bleed on command She knows I'll shut my mouth She'll take my hand And just how cruel I can be She knows a thing or two about me She knows a thing or two about rain She calls it holy water It rained the day she was born And oh how her mama cried The rain I felt with her I swear was electrified She washes away my pain And she knows a thing or two about rain Where could she go that I would not fall She knows a thing 
or two about love that she learned long before me. The day is already done before it has begun. And she's the only one that commands the sun and with her I will be Cause she knows a thing or two about me She knows a thing Okima, Oklahoma, which we all think about, because Woody Guthrie was there for about 10 minutes. About 10 minutes, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, it's not a very big place. How was the drive, by the way? Wonderful. Are you a guy who likes to drive with silence or music, generally? Neither. Yeah? No, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I put earbuds in and listen to people talk. Podcasts and stuff like Podcasts, that. Podcasts, yeah. man. I see the young people are all crazy about that. Those young, those young kids are crazy <laughs> about those podcasts. So I think about those open uh, Western landscapes. Yeah. A little wind and sun and, uh, you know, can sometimes feel kind of timeless out there in the Western landscape. I love going West. It's my favorite direction to go when I yeah. leave Oklahoma. Yeah. yeah. How long does it take after you leave home before you feel like you're actually going West? That's a good question. Um, it gets really flat. Right. And that's western Oklahoma. It's a very <laughs> terrible part of the state. And then, uh, then you go through, uh, you know, once it starts, the hills start up, and then, it's, and then the plateaus, you see them off in the distance, and you don't know if it's yeah. 100 miles or, or how far away it is. That's my favorite. When you finally, and then the air gets real thin, that's my favorite part. You know, we share, um, not much of one, but we share a border, Colorado and Oklahoma. Has, there's a little part of our states that connect. Yeah. But I do think that, um, it's funny, here we are in Colorado, which is kind of a, a uh, politically purple state, as opposed to Oklahoma, which is a solidly bright red state. Oh, it sure is. Yeah. Is that a thing that is palpable to you as you travel around uh, your home state, that we live in these sort of divisive times? Oh, absolutely. I mean, especially, I mean, I grew up in the woods, and uh, you see these... These little shacks that just, you know, you can drive by a, a trailer house that somebody just kind of has makeshifted into a house, and there's a Trump sign in the front yard. And, you know, it's just like, he doesn't know you're even here. <laughs> he doesn't know that you exist <laughs> out here, you know? So yes, it's curious. You can feel it for sure. Yeah. I have a feeling that purple is going to actually be more important as we move forward now. Mm, well, yeah. In fact, I've been embracing this phrase, we the purple. <laughs> and uh, I think in order to make a poor, more perfect union, we the purple, hereby acknowledge we don't live in red states or blue states, there but we go. live in the United States of America, and that this purple color is, I think, going to catch on. Who knows, right? I like that. Yeah. 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 Like you, I get to travel around and play music, and, and uh, there's a lot of sense that you're either on one team or another as yeah. you travel around. And that feels like it must have felt in the 1850s or something like that. I don't know. I haven't felt that intensity. But yeah. I'm also wondering if Trump is maybe doing us a favor by being so terrible. Time will tell, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I think he's actually helping people maybe f question their assumptions a little bit. That would be nice if that were, you know, if that were the case. I would, I would hope for that, that being the, uh, I don't know, the big silver lining. Yeah. You know, I was talking to Bob Weir about... You know, the 60s and starting the Grateful Dead and all that stuff. And there was that counterculture kind of needed something to push up against to start. And mm -hmm. do you get the sense now that the times we find ourselves in are, are good for art, good for music? It's got all the ingredients, speaking, because, I mean, it's just you've got all this technology in a way of getting stuff out to people that want to hear it, whether or not they want to pay for it, that they can hear it. Um, but... 
personally, I find it's difficult. I find I'm in this kind of malaise about the whole thing, yeah. and it's hard to write any, any of it out. Right. And I think people are afraid to speak because, you know, you throw something online or whatever, and it just gets ravished by trolls and nasty people hiding behind computers, you know. It's, I mentioned the words independent judiciary from the stage in Georgia, and it produced, I think, 12 pages of hate yeah. mail and some, you know, scary stuff out just there. Just got to ignore it. Yeah. Just don't click the comment section at the <laughs> bottom of the YouTube video. Stay away from that. Are you an avid reader? I try to be. I don't yeah. read as much as I want to or should. Yeah. But, yeah. Anything uh, stand out lately that you've been reading? The Jimmy Webb oh, wow. autobiography. Yeah. Cake in the Rain. Great songwriter. Yeah, Jimmy yeah. Webb. Yeah. Well, listen, John, I don't want to uh, actually... It'd be bad if I was really the most boring thing that happened on the program tonight. <laughs> but I, I think I'm in danger of becoming one. <laughs> um, so maybe we should go back to playing music. Okay. That's is, there, is there some stuff that I need to know before we do about what's coming up for you? Just anything exciting? And you've moved to Tulsa. I've moved to Tulsa. That's about is, the most exciting thing that's happened to me in a while. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I used to... That's, uh, you know, that's, that's, right. a, that's a famous music town. It is. It Kane's actually... Ballroom and... Leon Russell and J.J. Kale and Bob yeah. Wills and yeah. all that. It's amazing. Well, good luck. And listen, it's great. I really appreciate you driving over and participating in our little program today. Oh, thanks for yeah. having me. Let's get back to music. Welcome back, John Fulbright. All right. when you're here Like I 
I can show you I'm the one you can go to when you need another heartbeat near Don't I feel like something when you're here called Moving. It's a, it's a very inspirational song. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's the only positive song I ever wrote in my life, I think, maybe. <laughs> mm. I want to thank you guys for supporting this wonderful program because uh, this is one of my favorite things to do, I think, and as far as radio is concerned. I'm... Um, I'm typically a very shy person, and the radio is a very scary prospect. I'm shy, too. I don't here. know if you knew that. You're shy? Yep. Shy peoples unite. Do. In front of crowds. Yes. <laughs> We're shy. <laughs> but, of course, I'm going to get uh, Nick and Helen up on this song called Moving. It's going to go one. Don't worry about nothing at all. Cause 
John Fulbright. John Fulbright from Tulsa, Oklahoma. His latest record is called Songs, out on Blue Dude Records, along with E-Tones and Helen. Very talented young man, great singer, songwriter. He'll be back later in the show. This portion of E-Town is made possible by the Bohemian Foundation, building stronger communities through the Bohemian qualities of creativity and imagination. On the web at bohemianfoundation.org. As a reminder, for your viewing pleasure, there are over 2,000 videos on the E-Town YouTube channel, where you can also subscribe in order to stay up to date with our latest offerings. And if you're curious about E-Town's home base, E-Town Hall, our beautiful solar-powered music venue, community center, and recording studio located in downtown Boulder, Colorado, you can learn more about it on our website, etown.org. You're listening to E-Town. I'm Nick Forster. You're listening to E-Town. And uh, we have got uh, two guests this week. Um, one, John Fulbright, great songwriter and performer. And then we've got one who has been in a band for more than 50 years that's in some ways helped redefine American roots and popular music. One of the founding members and lead singers for the Grateful Dead, the band that... Um, really broke new ground ever since their first gigs in 1965, always experimenting, uh, innovating, trying things out, sometimes failing, but always engaging their audience, uh, inviting that audience to be a part of something, a shared experience that could rise above the normal. This founding member of that particular band has a new record out that's called Blue Mountain. Please welcome back to E-Town, our good friend, Mr. Bob Weir.
like you I might fly up from my cares Like the mockingbirds do I might fly from my troubles If I was a crow Well, I'm still a man But I still know where to go Well, I'm going down Cross 
over, he'll go running free. One more river to cross. So out where the bait and the pillows run wild, through endless green valleys till the one day it finds a river, then crossing it back to my side. One more river to cross. Crossing it back to my side, one more river to cross. Your visit to E-Town is made possible in part by the Scientific and Cultural Facilities District, or SCFD, one of the largest cultural funding mechanisms in the United States, supporting nearly 300 organizations in the greater Denver area. If you happen to tune in late and you've missed some of this week's program, the E-Town podcast will have this episode and others, along with content from past shows as well. It'll be available for free in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iTunes, and other podcast directories. You're listening to E-Town. I'm Nick Forster. You're listening to E-Town. And uh, I just want to mention that, that some of the material we just heard from, uh, from Bob's new record is really his first solo record in about 10 years. And I think it's the first album of original material that has some original material in more than that, like 30 years or something like that. Anyway, that record's called Blue Mountain. Um, we have got more music coming up from Bob Weir just a bit. And before that, here comes Helen Forster to tell you exactly what is coming next. You know, every week since we started E-Town back in 1991, we've had conversations with authors or policymakers or just ordinary citizens who are doing remarkable things in their communities, trying to make things better in some way. Those conversations have often been about renewable energy, conservation, sustainability, and it occurred to us that through the Grateful Dead and on his own, Bob Weir has been incredibly helpful to countless organizations and causes for decades. For more than 30 years, Bob's been focused on environmental causes, especially rainforest and coral reef preservation. And he's played countless benefits and raised money through the Further Foundation, the Rex Foundation, the SEA Foundation, and Rainforest Action Network. And he sits on the board of several of these groups as well. So before we play more music, let's recognize Bob Weir for those accomplishments too. Welcome back, Bob Weir. Hi. Welcome back. Why, thanks. Um, you know, you, Helen mentioned you played lots and lots of benefits, uh, and I think m the Grateful Dead must have played a gazillion benefits, too. Do you remember the first time you were asked to play to either raise money for a cause or an idea or a community? Boy, it would be way back right in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we're the conscious of the, human, uh, the community. They could certainly do better, but... Um, you get some, you give some back. That yeah. feels right. I mean, if you, you just think about it. It feels right. It, yeah. it feels like you're in touch with the community. It feels like you're part of it, they're part of you, and all that kind of stuff. If you just keep grabbing and grabbing and grabbing, you insulate yourself from the community, and you're really much poorer for it. 
So um, where in the process did environmental awareness and activism become part of your way of sort of pursuing your role in your larger community? What made that become something you cared about? No one's ever asked me that. Um, you know, I was raised in the suburbs, but spent a lot of time in the country, in the mountains, uh, ran away to be a cowboy, all that kind of stuff. So I developed a, a fondness for pristine nature. And that's only, that fondness has only gotten broader as, I, as I've grown older. And beyond that, when people do stuff that's environmentally insensitive or just, let's just call it wrong, it messes things up for a whole lot of people. Now, I'm going to make an example. It's, this will fall into the role, you know, people are going to hear this as politics, but it's philosophy for me. A lot of folks think that uh, you make money, you should be able to keep it. They don't take into consideration, I don't think, or a lot of those folks don't take into consideration how much of a, an, an in, infrastructure it takes for them to be able to make that money. I work hard. Yeah, I work hard too. Uh, well, I want to keep my money. Well, don't you understand that, for instance, if you're making TVs, refrigerators, you provide services, don't you understand that uh, if the government can give people some basic services, they got extra cash in their pockets. Where is that cash going to go to? It's going to go to you. It's going to go to you for your goods and services. So if you pay higher taxes and people get more services, what you paid in taxes comes back to you if you make a good product or provide a good service. The money is going to come straight back to you. Right. I'm not sure I see a huge difference between the natural environment and the uh, man-made environment. It's all part of the same web that we live in, and we have to take care of it, damn it. Yeah. Or, 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 yeah, you can live in a gated community and insulate yourself from the folks that haven't amassed what you've amassed, but you, you can't hold out the TC flies or whatever, you know, the, the, whatever is moved up from the, from the tropics because of global warming. You, right. You're not going to be able to insulate yourself from that. So look at the big picture and do the right thing. Yeah. I think what we're trying to say, uh, Bobby, is just that you have, through your musicianship and your celebrity, been able to support these causes that do add up, that do help make a difference, that do help support that stuff about trying to make things better. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, and not everybody does. So we're just, you know, shining a little spotlight on you and saying thanks. Yeah. All right, well, thank you. Yeah. So um, please welcome back to E-Town, our good friend, Mr. Bob Weir. Down 
down to the levee, babe The devil caught me there Took my twenty dollar bill It vanished in the air Sit up, run, let me take my time A friend of the devil is a friend of mine If I get home with more daylight Just might get some sleep
feel all over My love was one special occasion To live and damp on the situation
Bob Weir, along with Steve Kimmock, here at E-Town Hall. Not standing on such shaky ground after all, along with E-Tones, Chris Engelman, Christian Teal, Helen Forster, and Ron Jolly doing a great job. The house band has been busy tonight. Bob's latest record is called Blue Mountain. We've got time for one more song. We're going to get everybody out. We're going to get our good friend John Fulbright to come out for this last number. We get time for one song. I want to thank all our guests this week. Thanks to John Fulbright for coming up from Tulsa, Oklahoma and being a part of our special show. Thanks to Steve Kimmock and Bob Weir, Ellen Forster in the E-Tones. I'm Nick Forster. Hope you can be with us next week right here in E-Town. Well, I ain't gonna work on Maggie's farm no more. She makes me scrub the floor No, I ain't gonna work on Maggie's farm no more supported nonprofit organization to make an achievement award nomination or comment on the show in general feel free to visit our website etown.org or contact us through twitter or our two facebook pages distribution of etown is made possible by our family of sponsors this station and listeners like you well, I ain't gonna work for Maggie's mom no more
just like them They sing you slave And I just get bored No, I ain't gonna work On Maggie's farm no more This is a production of E-Town.